Silver stacking, gold to silver ratio, the 80-50 rule. For those who stack precious metals, one of the indicators that we monitor is called the gold to silver ratio. It represents the number of ounces of silver it takes to buy a single ounce of gold. This ratio can be used to diversify the amount of precious metals in your portfolio. Nothing in this video is intended to be investment advice. Always seek the counsel of a professional financial advisor before committing your wealth to any financial investment. If you enjoy this content, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. It's important to understand the history of the gold to silver ratio to clearly understand it. The gold to silver ratio was not always wildly fluctuating as it is today. Before the 20th century, governments would fix the ratio to ensure their monetary systems remained stable. For hundreds of years, the ratio was very consistent, ranging between 12 to 1 and 15 to 1. The Roman Empire officially set the ratio at 12 to 1 and the U.S. government fixed the ratio at 15 to 1 with the Coinage Act of 1792. During the 19th century, the United States was one of the many countries that adopted a bi-metallic standard monetary system, where the value of a country's monetary unit was established by the mint ratio. But the era of the fixed ratio ended in the 20th century as nations moved away from the bimetallic currency standard and eventually off the gold standard altogether. Since then, the price of gold and silver has traded independently of one another. Despite the lack of a fixed ratio, traders still use it as a financial tool to hedge their positions in precious metals. The whole idea behind using the gold to silver ratio is to accumulate more precious metals. This is accomplished by closely monitoring this indicator as well as others to make an informed decision when to sell one metal to buy the other. Part of this monitoring is making an accurate assessment of the current market conditions and factoring in all the outlying influences and conditions that may affect market prices. Particularly in today's chaotic economic environment, it's even more difficult to make sure that you have all the influencers calculated. Right now, physical precious metal markets are way out of balance with their listed paper spot price. We are currently in a seller's market with abnormal prices that do not necessarily reflect the current gold to silver ratio. This does happen from time to time and is going on right now. The actual physical price for the purchase of precious metals is being affected by the unusual market panic going on right now, but the markets will eventually settle and balance back to represent their paper spot price once again. It's important to realize that the overall concept and principle behind the gold to silver ratio rate is very long standing. It's a tried and true indicator that can be used to determine the value of one metal in comparison to the other. This ratio has been tracked dating back over 5,000 years and is the oldest continuously tracked exchange rate in history. People realized very early on that both gold and silver resist corrosion and oxidation. They are rare and soft metals. They have high luster and reflectivity. They're malleable and can be easily manipulated into art pieces and jewelry, and thus were considered precious by ancient civilizations. This historical trend for the value of gold and silver continues to this day. Although with 21st century technology, silver has found more favor for value and use as an industrial metal. So how does the gold to silver ratio work? 
If you own an ounce of gold and the gold to silver ratio achieves a level of 100 to 1, you may decide to convert that one ounce of gold into 100 ounces of silver with the likely anticipation that the ratio is unusually high at that level and historical trends and market analysis convinces you that the ratio should not stay at this abnormal level. If this does indeed happen, and let's say the ratio declines down to 50 to 1, you now have an opportunity to take your original 1 ounce of gold, which is now 100 ounces of silver, and convert it into 2 ounces of gold. This is the basic premise of trading the gold to silver ratio. Note that the dollar value of either precious metal was never a factor anywhere in this process, because it is completely irrelevant. If you continue to successfully trade extreme ratio levels, you will continue to accumulate your volume of precious metals without any additional investments. In all fairness, it is not always as easy to do. It requires much study and a great deal of patience. As with all types of investments, there is always an element of risk. This is why you should never invest any wealth you can't afford to completely lose. And I encourage you to be as debt free as possible before investing any substantial amount of your personal wealth. Here's a possible scenario. Let's say that you sell your ounce of gold at 100 to 1 and the ratio continues to climb up to let's say 120 to 1 and then stays there for the next five years. You have to have done your homework and know what it is that's keeping that ratio where it's at and what will allow it to return to a lower level and then you have to just wait it out. I know that's easier said than done but it's just part of the gold to silver ratio trading. Here is a 35 year gold to silver ratio chart showing the average ratio from 1972 to 2020. It shows an example of multiplying your bullion 3.69 times over this 35 year period. But what I want to illustrate with this chart is the time involved for these historical trends and patterns to develop for this 80-50 rule. I believe there is a misconception that the gold to silver trading is measured in weeks or months and that simply is not the case. From 1 January 1985 when the GSR achieved 50 to 1 to August 27, 1990 when the GSR reached 80 to 1, it was 5 years and 7 months. And this represents the time between GSR trades. We are definitely not talking about a day trade here. This is a long game, a very, very long game. The next trade from 27 August 90 to 8 December 97 required a wait of 7 years and 3 months. The next trade opportunity presented itself on 2 June 2003 and was 5 years and 6 months later. The next on March 27, 2006 and was a 2 year and 9 month wait. The next on October 20th, 2008 was 2 years and 7 months. Next, November 8th, 2010 was 2 years and 1 month. The final 8050 buy would have been on 15 February 2016, representing 5 years and 3 months. I hope this clarifies a rough timeline for GSR expectations. I also believe that the GSR is only one indicator and there are many other factors and considerations that must accompany your decision to use the GSR for the effective entry and exit of the metals markets. When trading the GSR, the 80-50 band rule is only a guide based on the most optimal historical data. Any band can be used, but be mindful that the narrower the trade band, the more trades will be executed, with potentially more risk and less metal accumulation may be realized. When studying this particular chart, the max peaks are what you're focusing on. As you can see, the GSR history favors the 80-50 band for trades. 
Now, with the current unique economic conditions, this pattern may prove less of an indicator for the future. But what I see now is a historically radical extreme in the GSR connected with a potentially massive global financial crisis looming in the near future. I hesitate to say that it's almost like the perfect storm. Once the crisis happens and investors realize that they can't buy gold on the open markets because all the physical gold is in the central banks and in the government vaults of China and Russia, everyone will immediately seek the next best thing, silver. And I believe this will skyrocket its price and greatly reduce the current GSR that is expressed today. Again, this is not investment advice, just my assessment of the current conditions and my humble forecast for the future. In March 2020, the ratio peaked to its all-time high in 5,000 years to 123 to 1. Considering current U.S. economic policies, the continuous printing of more money, the nation's level of debt, the inverted yield curve, and the world changing effects of the pandemic, these all are potential indicators that can bear devastating consequences to the economy. Historically, these type of events have led investors to abandon the traditional markets to seek safe haven assets such as gold and silver. We must also be mindful that gold and silver market prices are not a reflection of the physical demand for the metals, rather the paper price of its futures and ETFs. This is why it is so vitally important to physically possess your precious metals. Once the market crashes, the physical demand for the yellow and white metal will far exceed their physical supply and it will be far too late to convert your wealth at that point. The advantage of trading the gold to silver ratio is that as long as the gold to silver ratio moves in the direction you anticipate, the trade will be profitable regardless of whether gold and silver prices rise or fall. Did you find this information informative or helpful? Do you have the patience to wait years between GSR trades? Let me know in the comment section below. A big thank you to all who support this channel, especially to those who take the time to like, comment, share, and subscribe. It is greatly appreciated. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit the like button. If you're not yet a subscriber, then hit the subscribe button. Then be sure to select the notification bell to be notified as soon as I post up new content. Join the ST66 live chat every Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time. It's a good time where we discuss topics, answer questions, there are giveaways, and even a bullion auction where you can pick up some of your favorite bullion items on the cheap. Join us for the fun. I'll look forward to seeing you there.